what we have is two JBL uh, the top one works this works fine but the bottom one is not working so I already pulled out the amp we we tested it with a mixer top one works great the bottom one doesn't work so we pulled out the, the amp right now I got the amp right over here we're gonna begin opening this babe up and try to figure out what's wrong with it so the first steps is to remove these two screws right here and then I'm gonna remove all of these screws to get the board out so let's keep, get, get ready okay so what you're gonna do is peel both of these labels there we go there goes the screw you gotta remove same thing up here you're gonna peel and remove the screw When you remove the screw, careful. These little nuts on the bottom are gonna fall off. So make sure, put them to the side. They are gonna fall off and disappear. So make sure you hold on to it. Okay, next, remove these four screws on the bottom. So as you remove them, basically comes right off. Look at that. Comes right off, put to the side, and now we're gonna look at this board and see if we can find the problem. So before you go any further, you want to check the fuse too. That's another another area that if you're having issues, you're going to tell. So I'm going to use this uh, meter here to test this fuse and make sure that it's good. Okay, so that fuse was good. Now we have another fuse on the inside, which is also good. So I'm looking at my meter here. I'm getting a reading. So that means both of these fuses are good. So the issue for me is not the fuses. Okay, next I remove three screws up in the top here and we're gonna analyze this soundboard here. Okay, what we have here. So since we have two amps, right? And we know this one is good. Because this one is good, what I did, I connected them side by side, right? And I'm literally just gonna be testing the sound card. So the sound card is inside of this box here. So the sound card of this box, which is good, right? We know this whole amp here is good. But we know that this amp here is not good, right? This is this side that I actually took the cover off from here, which is the cover here. So they're a little twisted because what I'm doing now, I'm using this sound card I know this is a good sound card, and I plug it right here on this amp. So I use all of this in between so nothing is touching. Don't do this unless you know what you're doing, but you definitely don't want any of these components touching each other. I did not want to take the whole thing apart. Removing all of this, there's so many screws, it's a pain in the butt. But if you can't do what I'm doing right now, then take everything apart and do your own tests. So literally, we're gonna test this good sound card on this amp. We wanna know if this amp is bad or if it's only the sound card down here that is bad, right? So we're gonna be uh, putting power on the bad amp. I already connected uh, the sound to go into the speaker. So we're gonna be adding power right now and testing the rest okay guys so here's what I just did I connected audio to the good sound card and I connected power to the bad amp and now we're gonna go into the mixer turn on the laptop we're gonna play some music okay here we go we got a song ready okay it's playing so now I'm gonna turn on the amp. There we go, power is all the way down here. Got it. There we go, power's on. And whoa, you hear that? If you could hear that, look at that, it's working. Guys, this test tells me 
This amp is good. This amp is super good. But this sound card, sound card is bad. Now we're gonna take this sound card and try to fix it. But that is it. Just the sound card that is bad on this amp. Okay, so now I begin the removal of this little sound card. But like I said before, this video, every screw you remove, you got the little nut right under it. It's a really pain in the ass that the nut always comes out. And imagine putting it back. Whew, pain in the butt. So take all these screws out. Okay, got the sound card out. Now I'm gonna inspect it under the microscope for any issues that may be causing the problem with no audio out hey guys so under the microscope I found an issue with this board right there you can see uh, seems to be some liquid damage so I'm gonna go ahead and begin replacing those bad components and then I'll do a test and see if those are the only ones but I looked at the whole board that seems to be the problem area so wish me luck okay so if you can see on my screen right that cap right there and you see that hole usually those holes are supposed to look like that usually that hole will, will uh, allow the current to flow from the top to the other side of the board right so when you have a damage like that it cuts it off so that means there's no current flowing there's no data flowing to the other side so right now I'm gonna be using a jump wire to get across to the other side so let's get busy Hokey dokey, so check it out. I got a jumper right in front of it that's going all the way down to the other side. Let me see if I can show you guys the other side. So basically, that's the other side right there. You can see right in the middle. Look at that. That's my little jump. So 126, C126, it's where it comes out on the other side. So right now, I believe that's the issue which has been fixed. But I'm going to look around the board and see if I find any other liquid damage. Okay, so I'm getting ready to test this sound card. So I got it off the board, just sitting on the side. Got the power on the amp. The amp is just sitting right here connected. So now we're going to put some music. Let's get the music going. Okay, music is on. Wish me luck. Let's turn on the power. Ooh, I got a, I got a, I got a light. Ooh, oh my God. Problem is fixed, guys. Look at that light. We had no lights before. So, that was the fix. You hear it? Boom. Oh my God. I am so happy and excited for fixing this because I had no idea I was gonna be able to, right? And sending this out of, out of the state to get repaired or any other repair shop, anything that I can solve, I try to send it out for repairs. You're talking about $300 minimum with shipping and everything. And it could be even higher. Sometimes it's almost cheaper to just buy a whole new module. But guys, problem is solved and this looks good. Thank you. Please like, subscribe for more contents that may help you out if you have the same problem or similar problem. Thank you.